Hi everyone, it's Lana from Lana Under Pressure. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make the two most famous Cuban sandwiches using your air fryer. The two sandwiches I'm gonna show you how to make today, and they're super easy, is the Cuban sandwich, which most, pe most people have heard of, and the Medianoche, or the Midnight. And now that one is a little less known, but I think it's a far superior sandwich. I think if I had my choice between the two, I would go with the medianoche. But the great thing about it is the filling in both of these sandwiches is exactly the same and the only difference is the bread. The Cuban sandwich is made with Cuban bread, but that can be really hard to find in most parts of the country. So a good substitute that I find is Italian bread and I think that's as close as you can get. You can use a French bread, but I find the French bread has a little bit thicker of a crust sometimes, so I prefer the Italian bread. The bread on a medianoche is very different. The bread that we use for medianoche is a sweet, kind of like a hoagie roll, but it's sweet. I've seen a lot of recipes trying to recreate that and they use challah. And challah is a wonderful bread and I love mixing my Jewish and my Cuban heritage in my food. But at this, in this particular recipe, I feel like the challah is not the way to go. I've tried it, I've tried different ways to do it. I think it doesn't stand up, it's a little too eggy, and it's not quite right. But I have a trick to show you how to turn a hoagie roll into a pretty close cousin of the bread we use for the medianoche. It's really convenient because both of these sandwiches have the exact same filling. And we're gonna start with Cuban pork. And I'm going to link above uh, to my video on how to make the best Cuban pork in your air fryer rotisserie, or down below in the description, I'll put um, a link to where you can find my recipe for Cuban pork that you can make in the Instant Pot. So it's up to you which one you wanna use. But you need to start with a really flavorful Cuban pork. Our second ingredient is going to be ham, and you want a sweeter ham. So I like to use like the boar's head honey ham, but really it's up to you. Get a good quality deli ham. Also you need Swiss cheese. And I like to get my Swiss cheese cut at the deli. You can use packaged Swiss cheese. The only thing is you have to be careful because sometimes in the package, the already packaged Swiss cheese, they'll have some preservatives and that'll keep it from melting as well. So I like to go to the deli to get the Swiss cheese, but really you can use whatever you have on hand. You also need pickles. And these are kind of like the hamburger dill pickles, not the sweet ones. A little bit of mustard. And for the Cuban sandwich, you're gonna need butter in order to press it. But with the medianoche, what you're going to use to get that taste is you're gonna have your hoagie roll, but you're going to melt one tablespoon of butter with a half a tablespoon of honey. And that's what you're gonna use on top before you press it. So let's start putting it together. For the Cuban sandwich, we're gonna start with about a six to eight inch long piece of Italian bread and you're gonna cut that in half. And the number one tip I can give you is to make sure all of your ingredients are at room temperature. That's super important. The first layer is the Cuban pork, and this one I made in the Omni, so I cut it into bite-sized pieces, but if you make it in the Instant Pot, it'll be more shredded, and that's, that's great too. Also, what I like to do uh, sometimes is I'll add, once I add the pork, I'll sprinkle some adobo seasoning over it just to give it a little bit more of a kick. But since this was made in the air fryer not too long ago, it has a lot of flavor. The next layer is the ham, and you're gonna add three to four pieces of the ham and fold it so that it fits well. Now, traditionally, we use serrano dulce, but that can be really hard to find. So I like the uh, boar's head honey ham or the maple ham is really good. Next, we're gonna add two layers of the Swiss cheese, and this is where having everything at room temperature really matters, because if the cheese is too cold, then it doesn't melt as well. And then I'll add three pickles. I don't know why three, but it seems like they always add three, so <laughs> that's what I add. And then just plain yellow mustard. Nothing fancy, no grape poupon or brown, none of that. Just plain yellow mustard. And you could have added this to the bottom layer or the top, this time I added it to the top, but it doesn't matter. You don't want to add too much, just enough. And then place that right on top and press down just a little to keep it in place. Now you need to add the layer of butter or margarine and you're just gonna add it to both sides. You don't need a lot, but you just want enough to kind of brown or caramelize it. 
I'm using Smart Balance. I think it spreads better. But if you're going to use butter, um, a good trick is to melt it and then you can just brush it on both sides with like a, a pastry brush and, you know, or just soften it and that makes it easier to spread. And again, make sure that you flip it over and butter both sides so that you get an even brown crispiness on the top and the bottom. For the medianoche to get that sweetness, I have here a half a tablespoon of honey and a tablespoon of butter. And I'm gonna microwave that just real quick till it's melted. And I'm gonna set that aside. And this is our Martin's hoagie roll. And again, I love this one because it's sturdy enough to hold up, but it also is soft enough that when you press it flat, it makes a great crispy, I don't know, crunch. Now the rest of the layers are exactly like the Cuban sandwich. So I'm gonna speed this up, cause you already saw me do this once. And of course you don't wanna forget the honey butter glaze to add to your medianoche, and you're gonna put it on the bottom and the top. Just a thin layer, not too much. You just want a nice thin layer in order to give it just that little bit of sweetness and also to caramelize it um, and give it that crunchy, toasty outside. Now, if you don't wanna add the sweetness and for whatever reason, you can just use melted butter instead, but I promise you, add that, adding that honey takes this sandwich to a whole other level. This is one of the few recipes where I'm using the black drip tray to cook on. And we're gonna set our Omni to bake because I wanna use the top and bottom heating element, 350 for eight minutes and then press start. And in the vortex, you're gonna do the same thing even though it doesn't have a bottom heating element, that's fine. And we're gonna let the ovens preheat so that the pan gets really hot. And you want to make sure your convection is on low. If you're using the Vortex Plus, you're going to put the sandwiches right on the drip tray on the bottom. Now our oven is done preheating. And because we used a mode that uses the bottom heating element, it's gotten that tray really hot. So now when we add the sandwiches, it's going to create this really wonderful sizzle and the crust that we're looking for. Personally, I like my sandwiches with a dark, really toasty crust on the bottom. Um, but if you prefer, you can move the tray up to the very next position and that will give it more of a lighter brown toast. The last step, which is the most important, is to press them flat. Now I have this large spatula and don't, you know, don't feel bad, just use all your weight. Um, but if you don't have a large spatula like, like this, you can use a cutting board, a pan, whatever you have that's flat that you can really press down. And again, use all your weight and just press them flat. They come out perfect. The traditional way these sandwiches are served are cut on a diagonal. And I recommend using a good serrated knife just so that it cuts through it easier. And there you have it, two of the best sandwiches that I promise you'll ever have in your entire life. They're really easy to do, and if you don't have an air fryer oven, you can use the air fryer lid. The only difference is you're gonna wanna flip it halfway through. If you don't have an air fryer at all, no problem. You can use a panini press, or you can do it in a saute pan, where you're just going to put the sandwich in the pan on medium high heat, and you're gonna use something heavy to press down on it as it cooks and then you'll flip and do the same. Pretty simple. I hope you enjoyed my video. Please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check out my blog, lanaunderpressure.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.